Professor John Strimlau of the University of the Witwatersrand is an expert in human rights, conflict processes and international relations. He now joins us via Skype for more on the story. Professor Strimlau, thank you so much for joining us on The Globe. Now, the White House said in a statement ahead of U.S. President Donald Trump's historic summit with North Korea's Kim Jong-un, um, talks are moving more quickly than expected. What can we read into this comment? especially literally a day or a couple of hours before the summit is to take place? I don't read too much into it. And there were certainly a number of conflicting messages in your introductory report, which I think gives a flavor to your viewers of how complicated this really is. With Donald Trump now announcing that he's going to leave after a, a day of talks and that the talks themselves are only scheduled to last an hour to two hours, one-on-one -on -one with no advisors. I think that Robinson of the Human Rights Watch that you uh, gave a segment to was probably closest to the reality, which is that at the best, we will get a statement of intent to continue through the process. And perhaps you could get something like a general statement that this is the should be the end of 70 years of, or 65 years of stalemated, unresolved uh, security arrangements in the Korean Peninsula so that you could get a declaration of an end of the conflict or something to that extent. But to expect that the North Koreans would give up their singular card of nuclear capacity or that the South Koreans would be willing and confident to go along with the withdrawal of 28,000 U.S. troops and the removal of the nuclear umbrella that the United States has provided for all these 65 years seems to be a bridge too far in my mind. But we will know a lot more by tomorrow morning South African time when we get up and we find out whether or not that any progress was made in this one-on-one -on -one meeting. Now, Professor Strimla, do you think that these two parties are on the same page? Or, you know, looking at the time that has been um, allocated for the summit or for the meeting between President Donald Trump and uh, North Korea's leader, Kim Jong-un, is realistic in terms of are they on the same page with regards to the denuclearization or is it going to be another long, drawn-out process? An hour and a half, is that enough? No, of course it's not enough, but given the fact that leaders are totally inexperienced in operating at this level, and given that they're not going to have any of the, yeah, I mean, Kim Jong-un is probably better prepared than Donald Trump. He doesn't seem to feel he needs to be briefed at all and that he can carry his instincts with him into the meeting. There's been no meeting of the, of the National Security Council uh, in advance of this this meeting in the U.S. And so there's a good deal of nervousness on the American side outside of the White House and probably inside the White House. But Donald Trump is confident that he can take his measure of Kim Jong-un. And yet if they're going to make any progress, it's going to have to be handed over to others because you cannot trust those assurances that they're going to give new and unprecedented guarantees of security to the North. The North will say, wait a minute, Trump lies all the time. Whereas the Americans, other than perhaps Donald Trump, will admit that Kim Jong un sort of what was then described as new major ironclad agreements that. And that really should be for the Koreans to do for themselves. The real hero in this whole process for me is President Moon Jae-in of South Korea, who has kept the process going and recognizes that he is in a strong position to give some financial incentives to the North in a graduated denuclearization process and an upscaling of the economic cooperation that now I believe Kim Jong-un realizes in his impoverished country needs. South Korea is one of the 
the 10th most successful economies in the world. It's just exceeded the size of Russia's economy. And they are in a position to help, but they're going to have to proceed very carefully and very skillfully in the confidence building process. Donald Trump is incapable of doing any of that, in my view. Uh, Prof, how far backwards do you think both leaders are willing to bend? I don't think they'll have to bend very far. Kim Jong-un already has a huge victory that Donald Trump gave him for nothing, namely the meeting to show that he's now a legitimate player on the world stage. And I'm concerned about that because, one, he is a terrible human rights abuser and a dictator. And secondly, he got there by virtue of developing... the world's attention precedent we know it's a lot more serious development than say what the Iranians were doing that led to this that, um, that that is is part of the denuclearization process that the world needs to go through by the way South Africa of course is the only country that has voluntarily given up its nuclear weapons and I think that in fact Cyril Ramaphosa's voice on this now that he's on the security South Africa's on the Security Council for the next two years and with the BRICS meeting and with the G20 participation meeting that South Africa has it could draw attention to the need for a increasing engagement of the North but that it should be led by the South and done by the Koreans themselves with strong international support. Get the Americans and Donald Trump in particular as far away from this process as you can, and I think it may succeed. Mm. Now, Prof, do you think that uh, the continuous ongoing pressure um, in the form of sanctions is serving any good purpose in terms of efforts, um, you know, on, on finding a solution to the Korean Peninsula? You spoke of uh, human rights violations, and we've seen human rights organizations organizations come out and, and speaking against the North Korean leader and what its people, North Korea's people are going through. Do you think that the ongoing sanctions will make a difference or is it just uh, one of those things that are going to be brushed aside? <laughs> Professor Strimlau? Yes. Yeah, I was just asking you there if uh, you think the ongoing sanctions against North Korea are doing any good. Is there any good result that will come from the sanctions, especially um, uh, uh, considering the human rights violations that North uh, Korean people are going through, as well as the uh, human rights organizations coming out and speaking against um, the violations and the people, uh, the, the difficulties that the people of North Korea face? The sanctions are they working? Is the pressure good enough? Or does more need to be done? Well, more needs to be done in terms of engaging the North Koreans in a responsible way. And I think the South Koreans know this perfectly well. South Korea was an authoritarian government that's now a democracy that's a shining light in the region. And in fact, um, uh, Cyril Ramaphosa and, Ambas and, uh, and uh, uh, President uh, Moon of nations, and they can continue to work for engaging the North in a gradual way so that there can be a lifting of sanctions against the North that will increase the incentives for gradual reform. The Northern uh, government is not going anywhere soon, but it does have to liberalize. And I do think that this is a possibility that could be encouraged if the international community would keep a close watch on it and not boil this down just simply to denuclearization. It's got to have an economic component, and the denuclearization proceeds in due steps, as has been envisioned in the past. But now I think you have a leader in the North who really wants to get the economic side of the equation moving. And, but that's for the Koreans to do for themselves, in my view. Professor Strimlau, just wrapping up very quickly, what happens going forward if the two leaders cannot come to an agreement? Well, we don't know that that's going to happen. Let's wait for a few hours. But my bet is that it will be papered over, as your earlier comments indicated. Other people are speculating as well. Donald Trump cannot have another summit disaster like he had in Quebec just two or three days ago. 
And he, what he's going to have to do is to give this an aura that there has been a historic breakthrough. Kim Jong-un will play along with that. But substantively, I don't expect very much to be accomplished. Professor Strimlau, thank you so much for joining us. We'll leave it there for now. And uh, just before going to break, I must apologize for um, the poor sound uh, quality that we had just there. Uh, thank you so much for joining us.